the 17th, 2018, today of the last week in Carnarvon, they had been filming the investment of 1969 for the Netflix production, The Crown. This will be shown all around the world forever, so promoting a third investiture and making the Welsh out to be the most grovelling of humanity. We can forget a thousand years of their native princes and grovel to English royalty. There have been three princes of Wales, four with Glyndor, but there have been 23 English princes of Wales, and we're still grovelling. So, I come to Kilmary today because it was you in the 60s that the Patriotic Front Myself and Tony Lewis organised the first Kilmary rally as a platform for radical nationalism. And it remained that till 1983 when we came there to protest against the Festival of Castles. But in the 60s we were more concerned with protesting against the investiture. The difference is, 50 years on, Welsh nationalism has become passive and non-resistance. And the people who now organise this Kilmary rally are just petrified patriots of no guts or they be going to Carnarvon. I haven't gone. I've blockaded that castle twice. I've personally carried out protests in it twice. Today, I have got IPF and I get very breathless and tired. And so I would have, I would have gone to Carnarvon, however, if Gwyneth Patriots had organised a protest, but they haven't. Much to their shame, and much to all the shame of all Welsh Patriots. And so, let me say this, forget this Kilmary rally, it's in the wrong place anyway. Clawerin was killed in Aberedu. <coughs> this Senate, if it was first started, by somebody angling for tourists to come up this way, in the Victorian times. This is a habit of Victorian people, like Dave Gurlach, false history, fake news of its day. So I say to patriots, come here for one reason only, as a senator to contemporary patriots who did fight for Wales, like Kyle, Tony, Glyn, and all others. You bring your own crosses <coughs> if you're coming here, but after you've had this ceremony at 11 o'clock, <coughs> on December the 11th, go to Aberedev, the grave of Crowellen, where he was kept, injured overnight, taken there in a conspiracy, beheaded and his head taken to London. And don't forget, his brother was unrolled and quartered in Shrewsbury, and his wives and children of all of them were stuck in convents and prison for the rest of their lives. That's what the people of Wales should be remembering. Not this nonsense of Prince Charles and soon to be with Prince Williams. Get off your Facebook buns and get out and protest. Here, God! Coffee <laughs> 
for November 2018. In Carnarvon today, Netflix will be f filming the final chapter of Investiture 69 for their series, The Crown. We have decided, as there's no call from Gwyneth Patriots for demonstrations, we're not just going up there to find nothing happening. We have decided to find Llewellyn's cave close to Aberedu, and was it a job? So write to the council and ask them to mark the trail out, because it's really difficult to find. 
Now the flag I'm holding here is the flag of Llewellyn and the flag of Gwynedd. But today it's the flag of Charles Windsor because following the investiture of 69, they stuck a crown on the centre of it to make it English. So this is not acceptable to us. Normally we fly only Banner Glyndwr as the true last Prince of Wales, not Llewellyn, the last Prince of Wales is Owen Glyndwr and we find fly his banners, the Golden Dragon and the Rampant Lions. But as we are at Ogolf Llewellyn today, we will make a reason to fly his flag here, without the crown. <laughs> In December of 1282, Llewellyn was on the offensive against Edward I, and he brought his army to central Wales, mainly because he had received the letter that local anglo Normans and Welsh were going to side with them against Edward, and so he was brought into a trap which began with the bringing of his army down between Fangantin and Rosferig. And there he camped his army while he left to go to a secret meeting at Aberedu, crossing Bont Erdun in Bilf Wells. While at Aberedu, he and his bodyguard, the Tiley, 18 of them, were attacked, slaughtered, and Llewellyn mortally wounded where they dragged his body to this cave for him to die slowly overnight while they wrote to Edward I asking him what should they do. And Edward had no doubt what had to be done. End it once and for all. No more princes of Wales. And so Llewellyn overnight died, but his priest who was with him took the Christ the proper Christ the piece of wood from the cross, off his neck and took off for Gwynedd to make sure the Anglo-Normans and Edward didn't have it. Unfortunately, later on in 1283, when David was captured with his family, some priests, Welsh priests, handed over the Kreuznaid, the crown of Gwynedd and much of the royal treasures to Edward in Conway. That was the greatest of treacheries for which they were rewarded. The Archbishop of Bangor was given great estates in Conway and the priest who handed over the treasures, guess what he received? The first of the grants which colonised Wales. A coloured coat to go to Oxford and a place at Oxford University. So that, folks, is worthwhile coming to Ogilv Llewellyn. But write to the local council and tell them to mark this trail because it's historically important and I want to keep it hidden. So remember, Llewellyn was ended at Aberedu, but finally had his head cut off in Aberedu, in Ogov Llewellyn, and his head was planted on a stake in the Tower of London. His body was interred at a body Khmer, where Kovyun has put up a memorial. That's also worth visiting. I may told you earlier what we should do with Kilmary. Its use now is only as a cenotaph to contemporary patriots who fought for Wales in the 60s and 70s, unlike those today who haven't got much fight in them. And so, let us end here. But before I end fully, I got a little postscript which is absolutely disgusting. This is how the Daily Post, an English paper, sees the filming by Netflix in Carnarvon. The talk of the crown, or on the other pages, the jewel in the crown. That's what Carnarvon is being pushed as, and Netflix is filming 
the investiture of 1969. And as far as I know, there has been no protest so far. The people of Carnarvon have groveled before the English royalty like they did in 1969, and which they no doubt will do in the investiture of William. And mark my words, it's coming, and not so far away either. So, Gwyneth Patriots, get ready, get organised, learn to protest. The Lord Mayor of Carnarvon, I forget his name, but I don't particularly want to remember it, but you should write letters to him saying he's a snivelling cramber of Brit, and he's to go. Let me tell you about David now, Crewenin's brother, who gallantly kept the fight going in 1283, until he was on the run and hiding out in the mountains of Beremaur, above Abergwyn Gregan, with his tiley. After a time in a cave there, he sent some of the tiley to Bangor to see the bishop, to see if some way out could be made. They came back, Welsh bodyguards of David, leading English soldiers, who not only captured David and his family, but killed the last of the bodyguard who remained loyal, killed him and his two sons. And there's no memorial for this gallant man. And all we have war today is OBEs and CBEs to traitors. So I can only say to patriots, this stupid bloody thing on Facebook of when will Wales be independent, never, never, unless you learn to make it difficult for English ruling Wales. <coughs> so get off your bums. And get active. <coughs> they got only echo. Ha <laughs> ha! 
وقتی 